Good evening, welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Gavin Boyter and I write short stories, uh, often based on five random words uh, from a website called textfixer.com. Uh, that is what I've done this evening. Uh, I've come up with a story. Um, I was actually listening to Neil Young, or more specifically a podcast uh, about Neil Young, going methodically through every single album in his entire oeuvre. I think there's three parts to this podcast and it lasts nine hours. Maybe I'll put the link in at the end of this uh, description of this episode. And I don't usually listen, obviously, to podcasts while writing creatively because I can't hear voices. In fact, I usually can't even hear songs with lyrics whilst I'm writing. But on this occasion, something popped into my mind. Um, I was looking at the words and somehow the Neil Young kind of fed into the story. Um, and in, in modestly interesting ways, I think you'll find. Anyway, this piece, which is based on fragments of truth, um, is story number 134, I think, um, and it's based on the following random words. And it is called Out on the Weekend. I don't even want to know what the weird milky discharge in the corner of my eyes is when I finally rouse myself at a quarter to ten in the morning on a Monday following an all too typical spontaneous Sunday night rampage in which errors were made and many, many beers were drunk. My friends tell me I can be a bit of a hothead when I'm drunk and I'd like to disagree, but in truth I often can't remember much of the night before, especially when I remove the brakes and let the vehicle roll downhill. Why does it always seem so tempting to misbehave when it would be the least sensible thing to do? It never occurs on a Friday or a Saturday night after a long working week. It tends to happen on a midweek after work escapade or a bored Sunday excursion with my flatmate Molly. I'm 45, Molly is 29, and yet I'm the bad influence apparently. I'm a copywriter and I work from home. Molly is a mature student, adjective ironic, studying sociology, which has become a running joke between us. We call our spontaneous pub crawls fieldwork and use a unique system of serendipitous randomness to pick our venues. We dub this Berienteering. It works best in a large city like London. You walk to a random bus stop and get on the first bus that arrives. You get off after a predetermined number of stops, turn right or left and head to the first watering hole you pass. This is why I have a vague memory of drinking in a run-of-the-mill Irish pub, the Horseshoe Tavern, in a cut-price backpacker hotel bar, and in what I suspect was a lesbian bar, straight-friendly, or perhaps just desperate for clientele, hence the acceptance of my presence. We had three beers and several chasers in the latter, and as it filled up towards 10pm, Molly began to receive inquiring glances from some of the ladies, some of which she returned. I was fully prepared to make a sharp exit and leave her to it. Hiya, comes a somewhat gruff voice from behind me. I'm sitting in the backyard that's too overgrown to be called a garden, watching a selection of fluffy white clouds obscure a thin September sun, my feet up on the dirtier of our two plastic garden chairs. I twist around and Molly is standing in the kitchen doorway, half of her short pink hair standing out at right angles, as if she slept in a puddle of hair gel. Perhaps she has. I'm about to reply when I have a flash of memory, Molly's denim skirt thrown over the chair in my room. Oh shit. Made you a cuppa, she says. I know not to bother asking anymore, you never say no. It's true, I drink a lot of tea. I sit up in my chair and feel myself stiffening with an awkwardness I've never felt in the company of my lesbian bestie, as I always describe her to myself. Memory flashes belie the purity of that descriptor. I take the cup from Molly's hand as she squints against the sun, which has just broken free from a cotton wool cloud. Her pale skin is somewhat blotchy with yesterday's alcohol, and she's dressed in a grubby and unflattering bathrobe that's seen better days. And yet, something has changed. Not in her, she's always looked like this, rumpled, cute, the girl next door you secretly covet, yet rarely head-turning, bisexual. The word drifts into my consciousness as I sip the hot sweet liquid. This one-word question feels italicised, a brave thought I'd never dared have before. 
I'm an old man compared to Molly. I was born in 1975 when Neil Young released the excoriating tragedy act Tonight's the Night. Molly emerged into this fragile world in 1993 when the ordinary old Kanuck recorded Unplugged for MTV and cemented his legendary songwriter status for a new generation. We are worlds apart and yet no lectures this morning. I told you last night, she gently chides. They changed the schedule this term. Nothing until noon. I wonder why else she told me. I can see the light glinting off the tiny downy hairs on her forearms. Her tattoo of a manga character is half visible under one rolled up sleeve. I have another shock of recollection. The tattoo low on her midriff. Two snakes intertwined. Bob. I wanted to talk to you, Molly sighs. This doesn't sound good. She's pausing for me to cut in. I could be cruel and deny her this relief. I can deny Molly nothing. About last night, the way she bites her lip, brow furrowed, confused, sad, brings it all back. We didn't quite sleep together, but we got close. We saw one another naked. Her appendectomy scar, my weird foreskin. Oh, fuckaroo. Look, you don't have to... It seems none of us can finish a sentence this morning, probably due to the homemade chili vodka shots the six-foot-tall bartender in Sappho procured from behind the counter. We had four. Each. It was fun, but we, we can't ever do that again. It's not you. Oh, God, don't finish the cliché, I plead internally. You know the rest. I get drunk and crazy. I, I don't want to ruin what we have. I down my tea, yanking the empty cup from my lips like Bogart, tossing back a glass of rye. I am ridiculous. Molly, you're so right. I I feel the same. Look, don't fret. These things happen. Not in my world, I can almost hear her thinking. Still, this time, her sigh is one of relief. Thanks. You're so lovely, she says, ruffling my hair like I'm her child or a faithful hound. I can't resent her tossing aside what I had hoped might be the beginning of something magnificent. I pushed for it. I was the one who began stroking her ankle while we lay slumped shoulder to shoulder on the couch, trying to make the most of a bottle of sickly Grand Marnier diluted in flat lemonade. The memory makes me wince, but fortunately Molly doesn't see this. She's already gone back into the house and is yanking the living room curtain shut against the light. I hear the sound of a plane overhead, but it's not a modern jet. It has the wasp-in-a-milk-bottle buzz of a prop plane. I peer up between my fingers and miraculously a biplane crosses the blue strip of sky between house and hedge. Where did that come from, I wonder, losing myself in a pleasingly doom-laden fantasy. Something black and round drops from the belly of the biplane, rapidly increasing in size as it screams towards me, wailing like a badly played harmonica. There isn't even time to stand up, let alone run to safety. The bomb explodes a foot overhead, reducing the immediate neighbourhood to a perfectly round, smouldering crater. I am vaporised in seconds. Ragged glory. In case you're wondering, um, that last two words is of course the name of a Neil Young album. I've capitalised it in the written version of the story to hopefully make that clear. Anyway, um, yeah, there's some truth to that story. Not the lesbian bit, but uh, inadvertently, or not inadvertently, ill-advisedly snogging a flatmate. Um, I, of course, will not say who, if she's watching, which is unlikely. Anyway, um, yeah. sort of sad little vignette. Uh, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, If you did, you could leave a message to that effect. It'd be nice to hear from you. And if you're not a subscriber, hit the button. It's appearing on screen as we speak. It's probably that funny little logo thing that's like a spinner. That's what it's meant to be anyway. Um, And of course, you can share this and hit the like button and do all those other things that are helpful. I, the channel will be hopefully expanding. Um, I've had at least one person requesting five random words to join in the five word challenge. So if that person comes through with a worthwhile story, you'll see a guest 
appear. And I need to change that light bulb, which is flickering weirdly. Anyway, until next time, goodbye. <laughs>